How often do we find ourselves chasing after worldly pursuits, only to realize we've left God behind? What would our lives look like if we truly put God first in everything we do? My friends, these are the questions we'll be exploring today as we focus on how to put God first and not block your own blessings. So today, I will share with you powerful insights that can revolutionize your relationship with God and open the floodgates of His blessings in your life. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. Imagine you're at a grand buffet filled with an array of delicious dishes. You're so excited to try everything that you pile your plate high with every delicacy in sight. But as you sit down to eat, you realize you've forgotten the most important thing. Your utensils. Without them, you can't enjoy the feast before you. This, my dear friends, is much like our lives when we forget to put God first. We may have everything laid out before us. Success, relationships, opportunities. But without God as our foundation, we lack the means to truly enjoy and benefit from these blessings. In the well-known verse from Matthew 6, verse 33, we are reminded, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. This verse perfectly captures the essence of our message today. When we make seeking God our top priority, everything else falls into place. He provides for our needs and blesses us abundantly. Now, let's go on this journey together, exploring how we can put God first and unlock the abundant life He has in store for us. My friends, to truly put God first, we must begin by recognizing His supreme authority over our lives. This isn't about merely acknowledging His existence, but about understanding and embracing His divine role as the Creator and Sustainer of all things. When we grasp this truth, it fundamentally shifts our perspective on everything. In Colossians 1 verses 16 to 17, we're reminded, For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. These powerful verses highlight God's absolute sovereignty. He is not just a part of our lives. He is the very reason for our existence. Everything we are and everything we have comes from Him. When we truly internalize this, it becomes easier to prioritize Him above all else. Think about it this way. If you were given a priceless work of art to care for, wouldn't you treat it with the utmost respect and give it your full attention? How much more should we honor God? the ultimate artist who crafted not just a painting, but the entire universe. Recognizing God's supremacy means acknowledging that our talents, our resources, and our very breath are gifts from Him. It's about understanding that we are stewards, not owners, of the blessings in our lives. This realization should inspire gratitude and humility leading us to seek His guidance in all we do. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, we're instructed, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. These verses remind us that true wisdom comes from surrendering our own limited understanding to God's infinite wisdom. 
When we put God first, we're essentially saying, Lord, I trust your plan more than my own. This trust opens the door to his guidance and blessings. It's important to note that recognizing God's supremacy isn't about belittling ourselves. On the contrary, it's about understanding our true value as children of the Most High God. In Psalm 8, verses 4 to 5, David marvels, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. These verses remind us of our special place in God's creation. We are deeply loved and valued by the King of Kings. Recognizing this should fill us with confidence and purpose. When we put God first, we're aligning ourselves with our true identity and destiny. Now, you might be wondering, how do I practically recognize God's supremacy in my daily life? It starts with our thoughts and attitudes. Are we constantly aware of God's presence? Do we seek His approval above others? Do we measure success by God's standards rather than the world's? These are questions we must honestly ask ourselves. Practically, we can begin each day by dedicating it to God. We can cultivate a habit of prayer, not just in times of need, but as a constant conversation with our Heavenly Father. We can study His Word, allowing it to shape our perspective and decision-making process. In every decision, big or small, we can pause and ask, God, what would honor you most in this situation? This doesn't mean we become passive or neglect our responsibilities. Rather, it means we approach every task, every relationship, every challenge with the awareness that we're working for God's glory, not our own. As it says in Colossians 3, verse 23, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. When we live with this mindset, even the most ordinary tasks become acts of worship. Recognizing God's supremacy also means being willing to surrender our plans when they don't align with His. This can be challenging, especially when we've invested time and energy into something. But remember, God's ways are higher than ours. His plans for us are always better than anything we could devise on our own. Embracing this truth frees us from the burden of trying to control everything. It allows us to rest in God's perfect plan, even when we don't understand it. My dear friends, when we truly recognize God's supremacy, it changes everything. It transforms our priorities, our decisions, and our entire outlook on life. It liberates us from the tyranny of self-centeredness and opens us up to a life of purpose and fulfillment. As we continue this journey of putting God first, let this be our foundation. Let's commit to seeing everything through the lens of God's sovereignty. When we do this, we position ourselves to receive the fullness of His blessings. My friends, now that we've established the importance of recognizing God's supremacy, let's turn our attention to another crucial aspect of putting God first, dethroning the idols in our hearts. You might be thinking, Idols? I don't worship golden statues. But in our modern world, idols often take more subtle forms. An idol is anything that captures our hearts and minds more than God does. It could be our career, our relationships, our possessions, or even our own image. In Ezekiel 14, verse 3, God speaks to the prophet about this very issue, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. 
Should I let myself be inquired of at all by them? This verse reveals that idolatry isn't just about external objects, but about what we prioritize in our hearts. When we allow anything to take God's rightful place, we create stumbling blocks in our spiritual journey. These idols can block the flow of God's blessings in our lives. So how do we identify these hidden idols? One way is to examine what occupies most of our thoughts, time, and energy. What do we turn to for comfort or validation? What causes us the most anxiety when threatened? The answers to these questions often point to the idols in our hearts. For some, the idol might be success or achievement. We may find ourselves constantly striving, never satisfied, always chasing the next big accomplishment. While ambition isn't inherently wrong when it becomes our primary source of identity and worth, it's taken God's place. For others, the idol might be relationships. We may place our hope for fulfillment and happiness entirely on another person, forgetting that only God can truly satisfy the depths of our souls. In 1 John 5, verse 21, we're given this simple yet profound instruction. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. This verse reminds us that guarding our hearts against idolatry is an ongoing process. It requires vigilance and honesty with ourselves. Once we've identified our idols, the next step is to dethrone them. This doesn't mean we abandon our careers, end our relationships, or give away all our possessions. Rather, it means we put them in their proper place, subordinate to our relationship with God. It means we hold them with open hands, recognizing that everything we have is a gift from God to be used for His glory. In Matthew 22, verses 37 to 38, Jesus gives us the greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. When we truly love God with all our being, everything else naturally falls into its proper place. Our career becomes a platform to glorify Him. Our relationships become channels of His love. Our possessions become tools for His kingdom. Dethroning idols often requires sacrifice. We may need to let go of certain ambitions, adjust our priorities, or release our grip on things we've held tightly. But remember, my dear friends, whatever we give up for God, He replaces with something far greater, Himself. In Mark 10, verse 29-30, Jesus promises, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now, in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. This doesn't mean God will literally multiply our possessions, but that the richness of life in Him far outweighs anything we might sacrifice. As we dethrone idols, we may experience a sense of loss or discomfort initially. Our hearts have grown accustomed to these false sources of security and fulfillment. But as we persist in putting God first, we'll discover a deeper joy and peace than we've ever known. In Psalm 16, verse 11, David expresses this truth beautifully. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. True fulfillment, my friends, is found not in the gifts, but in the giver. 
Another practical step in dethroning idols is to regularly take inventory of our hearts. We can ask God to reveal areas where we've allowed other things to take His place. This requires humility and a willingness to face uncomfortable truths about ourselves. But it's in this place of honesty and vulnerability that God can do His deepest work in us. Remember, this process of dethroning idols is not about perfection, but direction. It's about consistently turning our hearts back to God, even when we falter. God's grace is sufficient for us in our weaknesses. As we make Him our highest priority, He works in us, transforming us from the inside out. In 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, we're assured, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. This transformation is a lifelong journey, my friends. Each day presents new opportunities to choose God over our idols. Each decision to put Him first strengthens our spiritual muscles and deepens our relationship with Him. As we consistently dethrone the idols in our hearts, we create space for God to work powerfully in our lives. We position ourselves to receive His blessings, not just material prosperity, but the richness of His presence, the fruit of His Spirit, and the joy of walking in His purpose. My dear friends, I encourage you today to examine your hearts. What idols have taken root there? What do you need to surrender to God? Take a moment now to commit those things to Him. Trust that as you dethrone these idols and elevate God to His rightful place, you'll experience a freedom and fulfillment beyond anything this world can offer. Remember, putting God first is not a burden, but a blessing. It's the key to unlocking the abundant life He has promised us. My friends, let's now explore the practical aspects of cultivating a God-first lifestyle. This is where our beliefs transform into daily actions. Living a God-first life isn't about perfection, but about consistent, intentional choices that honor Him. In Romans 12, verse 1, Paul urges us, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. This verse reminds us that our entire lives can be an act of worship when we offer ourselves fully to God. So, how do we practically present ourselves as living sacrifices? It starts with our daily routines. Consider beginning each day by dedicating it to God. Before your feet hit the floor, offer a simple prayer like this. Lord, this day is yours, and I am grateful. Guide my steps, my thoughts, and my actions. This sets the tone for putting God first throughout your day. Next, prioritize time in God's Word and prayer. Just as we need physical food daily, we need spiritual nourishment. In Psalm 119, verse 105, we're told, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Regular Bible study illuminates our path, helping us navigate life's challenges with God's wisdom. Coupled with prayer, it becomes a powerful tool for aligning our hearts with God's will. Another crucial aspect of a God-first lifestyle is stewardship. This means recognizing that everything we have, our time, talents, and resources, belongs to God. We're simply managers of His gifts. In 1 Peter 4 verse 10, 
we're instructed, as each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. When we view our lives through this lens, it changes how we use our resources. We begin to ask, how can I use this to glorify God and serve others? Rather than asking what's in it for me, this shift in perspective opens the door to incredible blessings, both for us and those around us. Cultivating a God-first lifestyle also involves our relationships. It means seeking to honor God in how we treat others, whether it's our family, friends, co-workers, or even strangers. In Philippians 2 verses 3 to 4, we're encouraged. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out, not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. When we prioritize the needs of others and seek to reflect Christ's love in our interactions, we're putting God first in our relationships. Another key aspect of a God-first lifestyle is integrity. This means living consistently with our beliefs, even when no one is watching. In Proverbs 11, verse 3, we're told, The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. When we choose honesty, even when it's difficult, we're putting God first. When we resist temptation in private moments, we're honoring God. These choices may seem small, but they build a foundation of character that positions us for God's blessings. Cultivating a God-first lifestyle also involves our thought life. In 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, we're instructed, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This means being mindful of what we allow to occupy our minds. Are our thoughts aligned with God's truth? Are we dwelling on things that honor Him? When negative or ungodly thoughts arise, we can choose to replace them with scripture or prayers. My friends, Living a God-first lifestyle is a journey, not a destination. It's about progress, not perfection. There will be times when we falter, when old habits creep back in, or when we momentarily lose sight of our priorities. In these moments, remember God's grace. His love for us isn't based on our performance, but on His unchanging character. As we consistently cultivate these God-first habits, we'll find our lives increasingly aligned with His will. We'll experience the peace that comes from knowing we're living in harmony with our Creator's design. We'll discover a sense of purpose that transcends temporary circumstances. And we'll position ourselves to receive the fullness of God's blessings not just material prosperity, but the rich, abundant life that Jesus promised. Remember, putting God first isn't about earning His love or blessings. It's about living in the reality of who He is and who we are in Him. It's about aligning our lives with the truth that He is supreme and that our highest joy and fulfillment are found in Him. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me, or listen to this prayer in faith, so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Your majesty fills the heavens and the earth. Your love 
is deeper than the oceans and higher than the mountains. Your wisdom surpasses all understanding. I stand in awe of your infinite power and boundless grace. Lord, this day is yours, and I am grateful for the gift of life. Guide my steps, my thoughts, and my actions. Lord, I thank you for your unending faithfulness in my life. I'm grateful for your constant presence, guiding me through every season. Thank you for the gift of your word, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Forgive me, Father, for my trespasses and for the times I've placed other things before you. I forgive those who have wronged me, just as you've forgiven me. Lord, help me to truly put you first in every aspect of my life. Transform my heart and renew my mind, that I may seek your kingdom above all else. Give me the strength to dethrone the idols in my heart and to worship you alone. I declare that my life is fully surrendered to you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spirit of selfishness and pride that tries to elevate itself above you. I bind every spirit that seeks to distract me from your presence. Father, teach me to be a good steward of the gifts and resources that you've entrusted to me. Show me how to use them for your glory and the benefit of others. Help me to cultivate integrity in all my dealings, both public and private. Let my thoughts always align with your truth and your will. Lord, I ask for your blessings to flow abundantly in my life. Bless me with spiritual growth and a deeper understanding of your word. Heal any areas of brokenness, sickness, or disease in my body, mind, and spirit. Protect me from the attacks of the enemy, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual. Guard my heart and mind against deception and false teachings. Strengthen me to resist temptation and to stand firm in my faith. Lord, I lift up my loved ones to you. Let these same blessings, healing, and protection be upon them. Draw them closer to you and help them to put you first in their lives. Lord, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, lifting each other up before your throne of grace. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, empowering us to live God-centered lives. Lord, we declare victory over every area where we've struggled to put you first. We claim the abundant life you've promised, not just in material blessings, but in the richness of your presence. Protect us from the schemes of the enemy and guide us in your perfect will. May we be living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to you. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this prayer, type the word Amen in the comment section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our channel Daily Jesus Devotional for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all your support. You're blessed to be a blessing. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory and so that other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world can join us and start praying for you right now. 
stand in faith with us while we pray. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.